we're getting close to the holidays, be sure to check out the merch site linked down in the description below. Get yourself one of those awesome hoodies. I know you want one. Now, over the last few years, jumping into this, I have discovered that, uh, well, there is one mod that conquers all normally when it comes to mob farms, and that is mob grinding utils. And today, I want to get set up a mob farm. Now, in my opinion, mob farms are really kind of ugly. They, they kind of stick out like a sore thumb, and today I want to try my best to make that not happen. Now, while my mob farm might not be the biggest in the world, it is incredibly powerful and will generate tons of resources. Now, with that being said, we need to get a space set up for this. And like I said, I don't want it to be this sore thumb that sticks out. So I need to get my build on. So after a significant amount of time, I would, <laughs> I've spent the last like three hours uh, literally putting this together because I kind of got blocked in the brain and I was like, how am I going to do stairs? How am I going to get up here? And I, I spent literally all that time figuring out how I was going to wrap around stairs so that way it didn't look so bad. But I am using the Hexerai stuff, um, which is fantastic. And yes, this is where our mob farm is going to go. Believe it or not, I, I actually did a peaked roof. I You know what? I'm actually pretty proud of this roof. Um, but inside here is where our mob farm is going to go. And I am so excited to get this set up. Now for this, we are going to need several, several things from the beautiful mod called Mob Grinding Utils. Um, now, the main thing that I'm going to be using is going to be this right here, the Mob Masher. And then I'm also going to be using an Absorption Hopper. These are all quite simple at my current state to make. And as you can see, this is why we needed Blaze last episode was because I was prepping for this. Um, now, the mob masher itself requires some diamond and some iron. Thankfully, we got that from exploring. Now, XP comes in this method, right? So we are actually going to need an XP drain. And this is another reason why I got myself some blaze. Because I need to make this drain in order to make the dirt that is going to spawn the mobs. Um, so, best way to get the XP that is required to uh, craft the uh, the egg or... <laughs> it is an egg, an egg that we need, the rotten egg, to make this dirt, is because right here, this cursed feed requires it. And uh, the XP drain is just simply the best item for this. So, to make the uh, the drain, let's go ahead and make that. Looks like iron bars. So much easier to craft in this menu. Oh, it's so fantastic. So, all I have to do is place this drain down for right now. Thankfully, the contents get saved whenever you pick it up. But I just stand on it, and all of my XP gets drained away. Yeah. And so this is going to fill up, and it actually fills up quite a lot. Like, the uh, compared to, like, normal XP scaling, this uh, this XP is... Uh, we probably already have well over a couple of buckets in here. Um, I think you can right-click. Yeah, we already have seven buckets worth of uh, fluid XP. So it is quite significant, so definitely worth using this. Um, technically, I already have enough, just with losing five levels, um, I already have enough XP to move forward. And, well, we have to make ourselves an egg, or, or GM chicken feed, uh, d yeah, the chicken part we'll get into in a moment. So, I have just about everything prepped up and ready to go, we should be ready to craft this. Let's grab a couple of buckets. There we go, boy, you gotta love that sound. And this right here is the feed. Right? So all we need is a spider eye, bone, D don't mind the fact that this is evil craft. It is any forge bone. Um, and this right here is the chicken feed. This is exactly what we need. Now, here's the, uh, here's the bad part. We've got to sacrifice a chicken. Now, when picking out your chicken, make sure you find the cutest one because it'll give you the best results. <clears throat> That's a joke. Uh, all right. Well, I hope you're ready, chicken, because I'm ready. You know what? You're the cuter. <laughs> oh, no, no animals are harmed in making this video. Now that we have our egg, let's go ahead and make, honestly, what I will call one of the simplest mob farms you can make in this pack. And uh, let me explain. So, uh, we have this rotten egg. We can go ahead and convert this all to dreadful dirt. Now, because this torch is here, it is preventing the mobs from spawning. But as soon as we remove that, Things are going to get a little wild. Now, um, I do need to go ahead and place a mob masher. We'll do that last. But first, let's go ahead and get our vector plates. 
These push mobs around. They're super simple to make. And we can put these on top and they will still spawn the mob. So instead of using fans, I want to go about it with these. And I hope I have enough. I might actually have to make some more of them. Thought this was going to be enough to cover this area. Definitely is not going to be enough. I'm going to need just a couple more. So with those extra vector plates, I just need to kind of get everything into this location right here. Um, so I'm going to be forcing everything into this spot. Just like this, by the way, if you hold shift on these, it's easier to walk around. But there we go. This is done. Now, um, the next thing is, of course, placing the thing that is going to kill the mobs. And it's this thing. Now, I'm not quite I'm not sure. Can I put a lever here to control this? No. So the lever is going to need to be on this block that it is currently on right here. So that will turn it on and off, as you can see. Um, or I can just just place it directly underneath and then cover it up. That's usually what I end up doing. Let's just break this block. And then I will pop down here and then just place this on the block below. Right. I think that will be the best situation here. Actually, no. Let's place it. If I can get to it. Let's place that. Right on that block directly below. Good thing I have the ability to do this. Um, so yeah, we'll place it right here. I don't think it affects the vector plates. But yeah, as you can see, we can turn it on and everything works. But as soon as we turn that light off, things are going to get kind of crazy. Now, um, for all of our mob drops, we should we should be able to handle that quite easily with the absorption hopper that I'm going to be laying down here. Let's pick that up. Perfect. I'm going to go ahead and place the glass here, break this, and place that in. And as you can see, mobs are spawning. As soon as we place a block here, everything should be working. Right? And I'm going to have to turn this on. So now that it's on, mobs are going crazy. We got mobs are spawning. Now, Endermen are going to be kind of a pain, right? Endermen are going to be uh, kind of a pain. So I'm going to put an Ender inhibitor here. This is really cheap to make. And it basically prevents Endermen from teleporting. Um, so with that, we're just about ready. So I'm also going to need to put down my absorption hopper. This is going to pick up all the mob drops. So as you can see, it just picked up all the mob drops and experience. And we want to have one going into a barrel over here and then the other stuff going into an experience tank. So this will be how I think I'm going to use an elevator to get up here. But we need to basically say, hey, send items north. So north items and then XP is, of course, opposite of north so south. And we have the fluid going over here. Perfect. So if we put an XP tap on here will have unlimited XP. And this is going to run, by the way. This should just work. So we just have a mob farm up and running at all times now. Pretty awesome. Now, believe it or not, all I have to do is just do a rescan and we should have a barrel here that has all of our mob drops in it. We can actually monitor that. Now, I do want to get some upgrades on this. I definitely think the, uh, the overstack Upgrades are going to be really, really nice for this. So I've got one crafted up right here. This is the max, I believe. This is the tier four. So it, it can hold 16 stacks of items per inventory slot. So I should be able to slot this in. And now whenever we get things like the shards and so on and so forth over stacked, it'll hold multiple stacks of them making this uh, barrel a lot better. So now that I have a mob farm up and running, I think it's now time to probably get started with a little bit more R's and at least get ourselves a better setup. So that way, uh, yeah, so that way we can go ahead and mine more efficiently uh, because mining is going to be very, very important, of course. And I should be able to get an AOE, but at the current moment, I have a little bit of uh, mana, but I need higher mana regen. And so for that, there's a couple of trinkets I can make. Now with me saying all this, some things that we are going to make is going to be the Ring of Greater Discount. And I also want to make myself a Amulet of Mana Region. I think Region is very important, and I definitely prioritize Region over the actual amount of overall mana I have. 
Now, of course, there are reasons to kind of spec the other way. Um, of course, there are spells that are going to be more expensive, but uh, I think this is definitely the way to go. So I am going to need a little bit of this. I'll get all of this crafted up, uh, but this is actually done inside of our enchanter. So as you can see right here, we're going to need uh, source gems, some ender pearls, diamonds. It's actually quite, quite cheap to make this and even bump it up to the next is the greater discount, which I definitely want. It's going to give us an overall discount on our spells. Very, very worth doing this. And then, of course, the amulet here. All we need is a dull amulet. Of course, I need more iron. Um, it's just the same. It's basically the same, except this right here we wear and it gives us regeneration. So more regeneration uh, currently uh, than what our current uh, equipped, or I guess it would be additive to what our current armor gives us, because that is a really big change as well. And I think there's even perks that we can put on our armor using this stuff, this kind of stuff. Actually, I don't, I think our armor gives us um, better mana stuff, but we're kind of in the mid range, whereas we can add sort of enchant stuff using the uh, the fabrics and threads. There's some really cool stuff we can do with that too. Now let's go ahead and make our base here of our uh, our ring of greater mana or whatever it's called right here. So let's go ahead and put this in. We are working on, yeah, the ring of greater discount. That's what we're working on. This is the, the first phase of that. And there we go, success. And then uh, to make this even even greater, than the lesser version. Um, four diamonds and then two of these. So two of that, four more diamonds, and this time two blaze rods. We just surround this again. And I cannot wait to go mining with this because mining with this setup is actually nice because we can get a three by three going and it's just, it makes mining so much better. So here we go. This is the discount. So this is gonna make things, uh, Things a little cheaper on us as far as uh, mana cost. There we go. So this will go in a ring slot. Now, as far as uh, the mana boost goes, or sorry, we're doing mana regen. It is going to take the trinket. It is two diamonds and four of these. So I'm going to have to run down real quick. And actually, I want to show you how fast this is. Um, now that we have mana in jars, right? That's been generating from this farm. Look how quick these work. This now pulls source from the jars, it's only been pulling from this one, and bam, it's that quick. You can see the it flowing over, fills it up, instantly converts it. It is pretty darn fast. So this one's gonna require four, just like that. Uh, and then uh, what else for the region? Gold and two diamonds. So relatively inexpensive. Oops, I just swapped out that. Relatively inexpensive. If you've done the the traveling, if you've done traveling and looted. So here we go. Perfect and mana region. And I kind of want to show a before and after of this because with them not on versus with them on, I, I think there is a huge, huge difference. So let's create ourselves now a new spell that is going to allow me to break things in an AOE. Um, so we need to set ourselves to touch right here. Uh, and then once we set break, we can now set AOE. Now one only does like a two by two, I think. And I think if we go to AOE, it actually does change this. Uh, and then of course we can probably set to item pickup. So it just goes into our inventory. We hit create here. We now have a three by three break spell. Currently I don't have these things equipped. So we can test this out. As you can see, it breaks three blocks. Now look at my mana. Notice how quickly that is falling. We can only do this for a very short period of time. But once I put these things on, the regen alone is very, very fast. And then I put the ring in the, the ring slot. Now this spell should cost a little bit less. And we can now mine at about this rate, which is pretty nice for being able to mine in a three by three. Don't get me wrong. Um, and mining normally is we can mine if I go ahead and switch to that one. I mean, there's basically nothing really stopping us. We can mine at this speed and we're never going to run out of the mana. Honestly, it's kind of kind of crazy, but this is fantastic. This is going to be a game changer because I'm able to mine in a three by three, which allows us to see a lot more around us. So I ended up making myself another spell book and I thought, which I, I know it was like this prior. Um, I thought that uh, 
Making a new spell book would wipe the book, that the book was what contained the spells, but apparently they're now linked to the person, and there is a way that you can share that knowledge with another person if you're playing with them, um, using a, uh, a parchment, which I believe it does say in the book here, this right here, making an anointed codex, um, or is it not, it's not anointed, um, a noted, uh, codex, uh, but, yeah, I was unaware, so I'm glad I decided to make this because... Well, this is perfect. I can now have my spell book here and it have its own set of spells. So I can now have this one set. I have it set to one. And let's just say I want a projectile and conjure mage light. And we create that. And now while I'm mining, all I have to do is just swap to this book to shoot a light. How cool is that? Now, another awesome thing that we have now is uh, that, that we unlocked actually a little bit ago was fortune, right? I just haven't had the ability to use it yet. So I set a touch break and max out fortune. It will not let you fortune that any further. And here is a piece of lapis. I currently don't have any lapis in my inventory and let's see how much this gets us. So that was five out of one ore. Not bad, but fortune is very useful for more than just that. Fortune should work on blocks like this, but notice it does come out at a very, very steep cost of mana. So now, while I thought this was a good idea to go about making these trinkets to make things faster, and it did make things faster, it's still just not fast enough. And I think that the best way to do that is to potentially start enchanting our armor. And there's a few things that we could that we could use um, that would definitely help with that, like mana regen enchant and mana capacity enchant. Like there's there's these things that we can use um, that would benefit. Also, by the way, I believe this can be a top slab. I don't actually know if it doesn't want to be a top slab. Either way, as you can see, we can use it, which is kind of awesome to, I mean, to be able to get up here and so on and so forth. <laughs> it's kind of cool. Oh yeah, and by the way, it can do the top half. You just have to click it as if it's a top half slab. Um, also, uh, as far as mob sounds go, it's, it's pretty simple just to turn the mob sounds down um, while we're doing this. Uh, but right here is our experience tank. Oops, and uh, make sure I'm on here correctly. This is our experience tank. So on a right click, you can see we already have several, several buckets worth of experience. There's, uh, there's a, uh, yeah, nice. Um, so yes, let's go ahead and put a tap on this, right? So we have an XP tap. And we can fill up with experience from this thing. Yeah, till we have 30 levels. So, at this point, with that uh, said, we should get an enchanting table set up. So here we go. I actually found the perfect place for this. So I just, you know, finished this up and added it underneath our tower. So we have a really nice place, a permanent spot for this table. Oh, perfect. Let's get to enchanting. Now, right off the cuff, this is running mana regen. What even? And it did roll protection. Ooh, this is nice. Okay. I wonder if this also has like a higher tendency of rolling said things like that. Next piece of gear also rolling mana regen. Wow. And we got some protection on there. Not the best protection, but honestly, that's what I want the most is max mana regen. I wish I can get, I want every piece to have mana regen three on it. Took two rolls for this one and bam, mana, mana regen and protection four. Uh, okay, that's awesome. So we now have mana regen, regen, and regen. Now, come on pants, do me good, do me good. What is unusing? I have no idea, there's mana boost. Either way, I'm able to use the grindstone to, to take this off, by the way. I moved my elevator to here instead of there. It's so much easier to get access to this from there. But still, also, we have plenty of experience to definitely get this finished up. And this has only been running for a short period of time. I don't know what unusing is. I'm not going to select it because I don't know if that enchant is something horrible or not. But come on. Magic protection, mana regen 2. This one might take a moment. So this one ended up rolling an ungodly roll. This is fantastic. We got mana boost and mana regen 3. Okay, that's awesome. With a magic protection. It's fine, we do have three pieces at least that contain the mana regen. Oh boy. 
And I'm hoping this is worth, um, we'll see. I, I want to go mining with it. Oh my gosh, this is a lot more reasonable. Look at this. I can just keep mining at this pace and man is not going down. That's significant. So I'm down here mining and ended up finding this. This is always so horrifying because I don't know very much about the new mechanics of the warden. And I would prefer to not have a warden spawn on me. What is that? Oh my god! Okay, 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 okay. Okay, blindness. That's horrifying. I don't want a warden after me. What is going on? Am, am I meant to go that dark? What was that? No way. This is not a warden area, so I should be fine. Can I sneak? Oh, I can sneak. They don't hear you if you sneak. Let's get through here. If I jump while sneaking. Okay, I'll be extra quiet. There's an area over here that had a campfire. Okay, what are, what are you about? Ooh, there's loot. Somebody was here and left me a trident? Excuse me? <laughs> what? Left a whole trident here for me and a diamond pickaxe. What? Thank you, whoever you were. Must have been a Fletcher. Wow. <laughs> I'm kind of glad I went up here. By the way, and yes, I, I know. I, I could totally equip this into my head slot. Yeah, and it will give me complete night vision, but it just it just ruins the experience sometimes. As much as I love and appreciate night vision in the times that it's it's needed, it just seems a bit over overkill when you want to explore and get that feeling of exploration. So is there a spawner? No, this is just access to a mine shaft? <gasps> is this a... Wait, hold on. This isn't just any normal mine shaft though. There's leaves in here. What exactly is this? Aha! Uh -huh. So, this is something special. Let's switch over to our harming, which I did amplify. Maybe I can kill this guy? Thankfully, I can just, like, sort of spam my spells now. And maybe we can kill this guy that's Father Eddie. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, we could, like, shoot him several times, it seems. Wow. Yeah, we have so much mana potential. Okay, uh, ranged break. Let's see, is there a spawner in here? Doesn't seem like there is a spawner, like, other than the one guy spawning. Oh, wow. Tons of good loot. And these pants also dropped. Which? Huh. He wasn't so strong. Challenge complete. Interesting. So, after doing some mining, I think it's time to maybe test out some of our more, uh, I don't know, some of our gear here and uh, try and get into this. Now, I've been told that I can put the items that I need in here and that this will pull from it. Let's go ahead and test this because I want to make a spell that uh, is a grow. So, it looks like, oh, it will. It will just automatically pull the items right out of the chest. How cool is that? And this should write this. And now this is a grow spell. So if I'm gonna be getting into this mod, I am going to need to be growing this crop right here. Um, the, the R's, the Mage Bloom. So with this, I can go ahead and learn. And let's go ahead and create a spell. Um, let's see, we don't really need the horse as much, so we can go ahead and change this. And uh, let's go ahead and do this. We'll say touch. And then we will say grow. And I don't know, we have to amplify it. It has an AOE, so we can just leave it like that. And now whenever we use it, it should bone mill. Look at that. So no longer do we need bone mill. We can just use magic. Fantastic. Now I need this mage bloom because I need the fiber here. Um, so let's pop this open and then take a scribe's table and convert this. Now, this is entirely new to me. 
I don't really know anything about this particular setup here, but this right here is the alteration table. And so I'm, I'm guessing I can take my gear and click it on here, it says use thread to apply onto the selected armor. This is, oh, so we put the armor in here. Ooh. And I guess this means one upgrade. The book explains this a little, uh, little differently. Um, and I think there is also a way to upgrade this to max tier using our altar over here. Ooh, so as we upgrade our gear here, we're actually going to experience some benefit from this as well. So we have some blaze rods that will take us to the tier one in the enchanting apparatus. Um, so let's go ahead and just like test this out. So blaze rods, thankfully we have two of them. So apparently two blaze rods, right? And then a piece of gear, for example, our helmet inside here, not enough source nearby. Oh, so we actually need source for this particular type of enchant. Now with that, let's see, will I be able to use the mine to break this? Ouch. So we pick up our source jar and we're gonna take this over here so we can see if we can upgrade this. So as soon as I place the source, place that right there, that should be able to pick that up. And then we click this into it. It is going to take 25% of our source. And this will upgrade this to tier one and it does appear that will it will affect our mana regen. Give us more slots. Now we have an empty slot one and two and this should have boosted, yeah, our, we have 60 plus mana versus the 30 that we had. And yeah, we also now have plus two mana regen. So this is another way that we can also boost our mana regen even further. Oh my god, without even using the alteration table, which is how we apply things like feather falling and other uh, very, very um, nice upgrades. Oh my gosh, at this point, this is significant. Look, we can just fly indefinitely. We can now fly through the air with the amount of mana regen we have. We can literally just fly through the air with dash. How absurd is that? It's so good. Oh man, traveling has never been easier. Now, as far as these threads go, like we have uh, one, this is one option, increases the user's maximum mana by 10% per level. Um, and that would be kind of nice, like 10%, that gives us even more ma overall mana especially since we are using spells the way we are um, and using them for mining and stuff like that. So I think this is actually kind of worth it. It's actually one of the cheaper ones. Now, I'm not quite sure if this requires any of the uh, the source. No, it does not. So um, we basically take our blank thread, which is just requires all of the mage bloom. Combine this. It's actually quite simple to make this. And I'm really interested to see how this actually functions. So. Let's take our chest piece. And right now we have an empty slot. It says empty one and empty three. Now, if I place this here, I can see those listed. And then I have this. And right there, I just place that in. Oh, and it's modular. You can take it out and put it in. So that is level three. So that should give us 30% bonus on our mana. So it gave us magic capacity. And whoo, that was 30% more, 30% of our current mana just increased there. So after doing some further study, I did realize that, uh, well, if you put one perk, for example, this one, the magic capacity, you can only put magic capacity on this armor. You cannot have it on all of the other pieces as well. So you only can get the one effect from it. So it looks like we're getting 30% as of right now bonus, which is still fantastic. Well, guys, today has been, man, quite, quite interesting. I, I got quite a bit done as well. Super, super excited. But I do want to give a huge shout out and thanks to the sponsor of today's video. That is the Discord Premium member, member of the day. And uh, I just want to say thank you so much, Spoolie. So uh, I, I just appreciate you. Thank you guys so much 
for all of your support. It really does go a long way, and it is honestly the best way to support the channel. Uh, is by becoming a Discord premium member. You can also still become a uh, Patreon or a Twitch sub. Those are also ways that you can get access to all of the cool perks over on the Discord, such as, you know, supporter servers and all that fun stuff. So be sure to check that out. And of course, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, click that subscribe button. I hope to see you in the next video. Give this video a thumbs up and comment down below if there's something I might have missed. I'm sure you guys have something to say, and I would love to hear it. That's how I learned. So thank you guys so much. And as always, thanks for watching.